answer. I guess it's good for only one other thing. Oi! Hey, what's up, guys? Sherman's Prime here doing another Transformers figure review on the Transformers 4 Age of Extinction Voyager Class Grimlock figure. If you're trying to find your Transformers figures and you can't find them at retail, you can get them at Big Bad Toy Store. Big, big, big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. So, pretty cool packaging over here. We get a new picture of Grimlock or a different picture of Grimlock on the cover of the packaging uh, than the Leader Class one. So, I just wanted to show that off. Here's a Grimlock, there's another Grimlock. I think that's pretty cool that they used different pictures. They didn't reuse the same exact thing, so I thought that's pretty nice, wanted to mention that. Then on the side over here it says Transformers Generations Voyager Class Series M4002 Transformers on the side. And then on the back over here you get a picture of Grimlock in his better looking T-Rex mode and a pretty decent looking robot mode. And then there's the Voyager Optimus Prime, which I do have. Then we get this bio on Grimlock. If you wanna go ahead and read that, pause it now. And then on this side right here you get an Autobot logo and not much really going on at the top. And not much going on at the bottom, and luckily I didn't knock over my review station. Okay, pretty cool. Let's get to it and crack this thing open. So here's our Voyager class Grimlock out of packaging, and I gotta say, I really like this figure overall. I like both modes. Gotta say, though, I actually prefer the robot mode of the Lear class Grimlock over this one, even though I still like this one quite a bit. So they're both really good modes on this figure, and it's really not too shabby at all. Not a big fan of this mace, though. Really don't like that in this version, but it's not a big deal. And he does have this backpack over here that kind of sticks out a bit. Not a big fan of that. But like I said, overall, I do like it, and I think. I think it's a pretty cool looking figure, man. And the dinosaur mode is much better than the leader class one. So anyway, let's take a closer look at this weak ass mace and then we'll take a closer look at the figure. So here's the mace and like I said, I don't really like it. This looks like a woman's hair clip over here. You know, like those little spring loaded thingies. Uh, not spring loaded, but you know, those spring active hair clips. And this is made out of a flat gray plastic over here and it comes apart. There's a flat section of this circle area and there's a flat section right here. That's how you can tell where they connect and it just goes in. This becomes the tail too, an extension of the tail anyway, and I don't really like that. I don't like how he holds it with this piece sticking away from him. I think that's kind of weird. So I'm not a big fan of this thing. It's get a comparison of the leader class version. This one looks like just a little bit more menacing, even though I'm not a huge fan of this as well, but I don't know. Something about this just looks a little bit cooler to me than this one right over here. So here's a look at Grimlock's face in robot mode. It doesn't look too bad. I like the sculpting of it. Unfortunately, I do have a bit of silver paint kind of fading over at the tip of his horn right over here, but it's not a big deal. Overall, I do like the silver paint applications. Aside from that one part, there's a little bit of a mess uh, where it's coming off right over there. Then another part by his ankle. But for the most part, I do like the silver paint applications. Basically, where we have silver, there was chrome before in the leader class version, and I think this looks just fine. I really like it a lot. I like the bronze color on the figure. It looks pretty cool. I'm glad we got that Autobot logo right there on his belly. Looks pretty nice. You got some extra stuff right here as far as the dino feet on the back of his forearms, but it's not a big deal. His little dino hands right there. And like the Gleeter class version, he could scratch his own butt. Well, with this guy, he can scratch his own nutsack if he has to, so that's pretty convenient for him. You know, he doesn't have to do that weird stretch thing that men have to do, uh, but he's a robot, so it doesn't really make sense. But anyway, yeah, going at the rest of the figure over here. This looks pretty good aside from that gray plastic that I hate. Not a big fan of that flat gray plastic, but fortunately, like this upper section of his legs is the only part that really has it. And then we have the silver again right over here for the shins. So this is right here, the only area where we have flat gray plastic that stands out to me. And here's another good view of the profile shot of the figure. Here's getting a full look at the back side of the figure. A lot of empty spaces over there, but it doesn't really bother me. Now this figure actually has some pretty decent articulation. The head can move side to side. It can't really move back so much, but he can look downward. I think that's cool. So it's not on a ball peg. He has no neck pivot. He has shoulders that can move outward. They can move forward. He rotates above the elbow over here, and he also bends at the elbow. And then to get his wrist to move side to side, you have to untab the dinosaur foot, and then you can rotate this over here, which can look weird, but you know, at least it moves. I think that's pretty cool. He has no waist joint or anything like that, but he does have hips that move outward, and they do move forward, and things get a little clunky right here with this upper thigh piece, or this hip piece, and this crotch piece over here but it can move quite a bit. He also rotates up here. He bends at the knee, doesn't move quite 90 degrees, and then he has feet that move down and he can't really move them up. And he also has this weird ankle pivot over here. It's not quite an ankle pivot, it's like a shin pivot, but you can bend right there, which looks strange as hell, but if you're just moving it a little bit, it doesn't look so bad and you get a little bit of ankle pivot. I think that's pretty nice. So this Voyager class figure stands at about eight inches tall. So here's Leader class Grimlock compared to the Voyager class Grimlock, and I think they both 
look cool, actually. Unfortunately, I'm just noticing now that this guy has no Autobot logo. I, I don't see an Autobot logo on this guy at all. This guy definitely has the one right there on his uh, under his diaphragm. But yeah, I think they both look cool. I think this one looks a little better. But if you were to disagree with me, I wouldn't hate you for it. I think they're both awesome. And here he is compared to our Masterpiece Grimlock figure that has just been re-released. So if you missed that figure a while ago, you can get it now at Toys R Us. Just want to mention that. This is how he originally looked. Uh, this is basically a G1 interpretation. And this is our movie version version over here. And here he is next to the first edition Lear Class Prime. Now while people have complained about these figures shrinking in size, here's Voyager Class Grimlock compared to Voyager Class Ironhide from the first Transformers movie. And I think they stand pretty well side by side. I don't feel short changed with this Voyager Class Grimlock at all. Here he is compared to his two other Dinobot counterparts. We have Slug over here which is a Deluxe Class figure and another Deluxe Class figure we have Scorn. And I really wish that all the Dinobots came in Voyager Class size. I think that would be pretty awesome. But still, seeing these three together yeah, it looks cool. We just have four more Dinobots to go. And then of course here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. So I like the transformation for this figure. It's not very difficult, nor is it stupid simple, but unfortunately just like the leader class Grimlock figure, the instructions show you how to transform him from his dino mode into his robot mode only, but the figure arrives in robot mode. So you kind of have to figure it out and go backwards, or you could watch this video and let your buddy Sheridan's Prime show you how to do it. So let's get to this transformation while you take us away, Bumblebee. Yeah, alrighty, so first thing, we're gonna knock over the mace off camera, and then we're gonna move these arms outward over here, and bend the feet down like this, and then I want to connect these two together. There's a tab that goes into the foot right over there, and we're gonna have that connect like so. So this is actually gonna turn into the tail. You also wanna move these flaps out of the way over here, so we're gonna get this out of the way like this, and then we're gonna form the T-Rex head. So we wanna move this back. This is all going to shift back over here and then this piece is going to swing through the two halves of his head. So we're going to get that to flip around and that's going to go through right there. Then we can connect the two top parts of the face and get that all connected. There's this tab right over here that sticks up and that's going to connect into this bronze colored section over here and that will form the head. So we're there. And then these are articulated right over here by the way. Now what you want to do also is you want to swing or well, you want to lift this whole part up over here and this piece of the face goes into his back which is very strange and then swing all this up and these two tabs right here in the tail I disconnected that area but this tab and this tab it's gonna go into these slots right here in the black section there's so there's two slots over there so let's reconnect this and get this all connected properly all right y'all okay that keeps on coming apart I mean that's a little frustrating but let's see here. Let's get some grace in this transformation. Come on, man. Jeez. All right, there we go. Eh, we're all right, there, there. Yeah, yeah. All right, there it is. Not so graceful, but that's pretty much it. And then you want to take the legs, move them downward, and move this downward over here. Then you want to move the foot all the way down, and then rotate it. Rotate this and then move this back then there's this tab right here that goes into the shin So you want to make sure that's tabbed in properly and then rotate right here up at the thigh So tab that in and move that forward and then move these uh, spurs right here going backwards And then you want to move this down right here, and I don't really like how it shows you to transform this section, but you're supposed to move these two chest plates downward. There's tabs for these, by the way. So there's a little uh, slot right here and a tiny little tab right there at the end. So you can barely see it, but it goes in like that and like that. And that is pretty much the transformation. Uh, you do want to kind of clean this up a little bit, but that's basically it. So there wasn't that much tabbing left to do, just making sure that the legs are tabbed into this back plate over here. And I really like this T-Rex mode, much, much better than the leader class version. I like it. This is pretty badass looking. He doesn't have that huge hole right there in his mouth. I think that's great. And I really like the distribution of colors throughout this whole thing. This is pretty nice looking. I don't really like this hump over here. That's his face in robot mode, by the way. That's kind of annoying to me, but not a big deal, man. And I really like the teal color, the metallic color that they used right here for his eyes. That's pretty nice. So he has this jaw function over here. You move that up and down. It's pretty cool. Me Grimlock. Yeah, that's pretty nice anyway. Then he has these arms that move forward and back. Back, they're on ball joints and then this uh, disconnects right over here and I actually don't really like the way they tell you to transform this with this 
black piece showing and you get this huge gap right over here. So what I like to do is I actually like to mist transform it and move the, well you gotta move the legs out of the way, then move this up over here and then do the same thing to the other side. So when I do that, I like how it looks a little better like this. I like this more. So you don't have that gap underneath over here, and then you don't have this weird part with the black part showing. And I don't know, I just think it looks better. The only thing is that the arms are kind of at a weird angle, but still, he just has tiny little T-Rex arms. Who cares? So yeah, to me that looks better. That looks like a little bit better of a T-Rex. This kind of got disconnected right there, but yeah, looking pretty cool. And he's got his Autobot tramp stamp right there on his back. Not too bad. So yeah, pretty nice looking T-Rex mode. And he also has legs that move forward and back over here. They move outward. You can rotate above the knee, bend at the knee, then you can move this up and down right here. It's the same articulation for his arms in his robot mode. I just want to get a closer look at this T-Rex head. I like how it looks, man. It's not too bad. I really like that teal metallic paint they used for his eye. That's pretty sweet. And the teeth aren't sharp or anything. They're made out of a firm plastic. Now I will say that for his weapon storage, it is quite weak. You have his mace right over here and you just plug it into the tail and it's supposed to be an extension. And you have to make sure that you have these two little grooves right here at the very bottom going into these tabs that stick out right here, the back of the tail. And I've had some paint scratching on mine from doing this. It's kind of a bummer and I really don't like how this looks. I mean, this isn't, this is, this goes exactly where you think it's going to and it's just going to be an extra long tail over here which is really funny because the leader class version had a super short tail and this one has an extra long tail that just looks ridiculous but fortunately you can remove this and taking it off doesn't make this tail look weak I think the proportions on this are actually okay so to the top of Grimlock's horns he stands just over five inches tall measuring out from nose to tail he's at about nine inches across and if you want to count this ridiculous tail it's about 13 inches across so here's both Grimlock's side by side in their T-Rex modes and I gotta say I really like this Voyager class one a lot more. I actually think their heads are about the same size. This could possibly be a bigger T-Rex head. Uh, the leader class one's head is still a little bigger but not by much man. I mean looking at these two forward like that, dead on. Yeah the T-Rex heads are almost the same size. That is just ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. Then taking a bird's eye view look at these two figures, you can see how much larger the leader class one is. But yeah, this guy's twice the price as this one over here, and I feel like you are not getting twice the figure. Nah, definitely want to go with this one. Then having this Voyager Grimlock next to Deluxe Class's Slug and Scorn, they look very, very cool. Especially having these two, you know, you can have your T-Rex versus uh, Triceratops battle going on, even though they are friends. But yeah, then this guy is actually bigger than a T-Rex. I wish we had a Voyager Class version of Scorn, that would be awesome. So that about does it. This is a very cool figure. I highly recommend it. It's going to cost you about 25 bucks, something like that, and I think it's well worth it. Very cool Grimlock figure. Like I said, I recommend it, and I'm very happy with it, aside all the little quirks that kind of bother me, but they don't even really bother me that much. This is a very cool figure. So anyway, please check out tformers.com for a full gallery of images, and hit the like button if you liked the video. Leave a comment if you got something to say about the figure or the review, and please subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. That's crispy. I'm looking at a bird's eye view of these two. Oh. <laughs>